Ms. Rabia Bakhti, um, she's a young politician and um, she grabbed the headlines when she became the youngest elected Muslim female politician in the United Kingdom in 2011. Uh, she's featured as an international, in the international book of 25 of the most successful change makers in the world. Rabia continues to pursue her passion for politics and making a change at all levels from conversing with prime ministers and presidents to working for multiple level national and international organizations. A very well worth it. The most politicized country in the world, so we're not much surprised when Rabia actually made the headlines. It become, she became the first ever. Actually, uh, Rabia, we know your story and it's been such an inspiring one. We want you to, to share how can they do it, and how, what takeaway, what message would you leave for them today? Rabia Bhatti. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum, good afternoon and welcome. I'm absolutely honored and delighted to be here with you all today to talk about politics and essentially uh, pathways into politics and leadership as a whole. Uh, before I begin, I want to uh, give a huge um, sum of grat gratitude to the World Congress of Overseas Pakistanis, to the British Pakistan Foundation, to students and third party uh, organizations that have been responsible for bringing us all here together in providing us a platform for engagement, participation and for learning. Um, it's an honor, in fact, for me to be able to address the leaders of tomorrow, which just goes to show the innovative thinking and creativity that goes into planning um, for the great things that are to come. And that such an event should take place in an establishment of, of learning is indeed most fitting for the occasion. Uh, SOAS is an institution that has been marked over and over again for its open-minded culture and its can-do attitude fostering the positive narratives of heritage and the importance of culture and ethnicity. Our personal histories, the glories and defeats that have shaped our worldly experiences time and time again. And as a former student who was fortunate enough to take some of my undergraduate models here, I'm delighted to be able to return this Sunday afternoon. Today we gather here to both mark and to celebrate Pakistan's milestones and achievements in its nearly 70 years, a nation that was forged out of the very real struggles and challenges by our founding fathers and indeed our families in the hopes to secure a better future for us all. Over the last few decades, Pakistan has seen a number of both profound challenges and historic changes. And today we are here to focus on its future and indeed the responsibilities of you all here today as leaders of tomorrow. For indeed, it is all of you that must take up the mantle of responsibility to guide our nations both here and back at home in the decades to come in reaffirming the greatness of our nation. We understand that greatness is never given. It must be earned. Our journey has never been one of shortcuts or settling for less. It is not the path for the faint-hearted, for those who prefer leisure over work or seek only the pleasures of riches and fame. Rather, it has been the risk-takers, the doers, the makers of things, some celebrated but more often than not the men and women obscured in their labour who have carried us up the long and rugged path towards prosperity and freedom. 
Now, one of the most fascinating elements to have emerged in recent times from Pakistan is the youth voice. A voice that has been heard across borders and overseas of a young population no longer content to see the traditional avenues of politics being pursued, but one that insists on being given a seat at the table. And indeed, you see a similar activism here in the United Kingdom, where young people are the new creators of innovation, driving forward in the vehicle of entrepreneurship and civic engagement without allowing their age or experience to hold them back. Only last week I was giving a similar talk about the ins and outs of political campaigning to a similar organisation and how to run a successful election. That we can now today talk about holding workshops for young British Pakistanis and assisting them on the road to becoming open-minded, forward-thinking parliamentarians is, in my humble opinion, a great benchmark for progress on how far we have come as an integrated, ambitious society which seeks to both empower and to be empowered. Now, there are some who question the scale of our ambitions, and here I talk to the young people in the audience. They suggest that our system cannot tolerate too many big plans, their memories are short, for they have forgotten what this country has already done, what free men and women who can achieve when the imagination is employed, join to common purpose and necessity to change. What these cynics fail to understand is that the ground has shifted beneath them, that the stale political arguments that have consumed us for so long no longer apply. The questions we ask today is not whether our government is too big or too small, but it is whether it works, whether it helps families find jobs at a decent wage, care they can afford, a retirement that is dignified. Where the answer is yes, we intend to move forward, where the answer is no, we will develop solutions. And those of you who will tomorrow manage the public's money, you will be held to account to spend wisely, to reform bad habits, and to do your business in the light of day. Because only then can we restore the vital trust between a people and their government. We know that our patchwork heritage is a strength, not a weakness. We are a nation of Christians and Muslims, Jews, <coughs> Hindus, and non-believers. We are shaped by every language and culture, drawn from every ends of this earth, and because we have tasted the bitter swell of civil war and segregation, and emerge from that dark chapter stronger and more united, we cannot help but believe that the old hatreds shall someday pass, that the lines of segregation and superiority shall soon dissolve, and that as the world grows smaller and becomes more connected, our <coughs> common, hand, common humanity shall reveal itself. Most importantly of all, the leaders of tomorrow must play this vital role in ushering error in a new era of peace. Our challenges may be new, with the rise of digital communications, the fast-moving pace of innovation and cyber technology. Indeed, even the instruments with which we meet them may be new. Thank you, Rana. Now, this is a question for you. You've been a part of the Conservative Party for a very long time, and a party which is generally essentially considered a party of white, a white party. And being an Asian, you have made certain inroads. How do you be able to explain or define that journey or the struggles if you could talk about that? Of course, this is something which I Thank you, Tamil Al Mahir, I would definitely do that. Um, in 30 to 40 seconds, um, the core cool things that I would say to take away is number one, message matters. Know what you are standing for, know how to articulate it, understand the modes of communication that are available to you, um, you know, digital technology, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Use the vehicles that you have in order to get your message across and then know what it is so that you can um, defend it. In terms of political parties, I'm from the Conservative Party, <coughs> I joined when I was 17. Um, it's a party that I feel that represents me the best and I can represent it the best but have a narrative um, so I stood for council at the age of 20 at the age of 18 I was one of the youngest school governors in the country at the age of 19 I was the first president of the largest educational institution in Buckinghamshire and at 20 when I stood I had managed to acquire a certain skill set I was able to evidence to my constituents that I had substantial experience and that if they provided me with the opportunity to represent them um, within the council chambers I'd be able to do a good job so have a narrative message matters and understand the modes of communication in order to articulate your message to the to the widest audience. Excellent. Thanks for the and let's give a big round of applause.